So I went to Uman this past Rosh Hashani. Uman is like the Disneyland of Ukraine. If all the rides were made out of cobblestone and the mascots suffered from severe anger issues. Uh, three languages are spoken in Uman. Hebrew, Yiddish, and aggressive. You know, Rabbi Nachman, he was all about meditation and being in the moment. Not one of the breast lovers pushing me to get to this guy's kever ever meditated in their life, right? <laughs> breast lovers are like the energizer bunny, you know, they just keep going and going and dancing and pushing. Only time that a breast lover still is during Shimon Esrei. And even then, no silence. When I was dominating in a minion with breast lovers, all of a sudden I hear behind me. Did I, did I, all I did was take three steps back, three steps back. Did I got a word here? Like, and then, oh, and then there was the poor, the poor Ukrainian locals. You know, a lot of these Ukrainian locals, probably in the KGB, you know, learned, learned methods of, of war and torture, but they didn't learn one essential thing that would define their livelihood. Bargaining with an Israeli. These poor Ukrainian salesmen, and Israeli would walk up, Israeli would say, Kama zevaleh. And this Ukrainian who literally learned Hebrew just for this moment says, Esri. Israeli hands him a ten. Uh, lo, Esri. Kach, kach, mazeh. Poor Ukrainians have no idea what to do with that. People ask me what the craziest part of Uman was. Was it the dancing, the davening, the partying? No. Free chillin' at Kiddush was the craziest thing I've ever seen. It was straight out of the Hunger Games. I saw a full-grown man take a serving spoon from the chillin', dip it in, put it in his mouth, and dip it back. To establish dominance? I don't know. I don't know why, what's the, what's the, rational, what's the rationale behind that? Um, I, I learned about the kosher smoke in, in Uman, and how the kosher smoke's work is right before Yantith. A single cigarette is lit, and that cigarette is then used to light every single cigarette in Uman over a two-day Rosh Hashanah. So I'm actually thinking about creating a Netflix documentary where I attach a GoPro to that one cigarette and we talk about Uman. Um, in Uman, I learned that there's kids. Kids go to Uman. Um, and Uman kids and music festival kids are kind of the same, where their parents are like, Go out, experience everything, just make sure you get to ride home when it's all over. And so, you have these Uman kids, which by the way, the breast lover wives, they must cut some kind of deal where they're like, all right, you could go to Uman, but you gotta take at least half the kids. <laughs> so you have these breast lover dads with six or seven unattended kids <laughs> running around, and they, they, the Uman kids, they're bored out of their minds, so they like to play this fun little game where when everyone's saying Shimona Esrei, they'll sit in someone's seat and start kicking their shins. <laughs> Just kicking the back of their, uh, to test their amuna. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. Um, and also, with, with the Uman kids, most kids, when they get tired, they take something called a nap. When Uman kids get tired, they take a drag of their cigarette and a sip of their beer. The drinking age, by the way, in Ukraine is if you could afford it. Um, my, my girlfriend and I sadly broke up right before Uman, and uh, probably because I went to Uman. Uh, and after a breakup, you're very vulnerable. You're, always, you're looking for a sign. And upon entering Uman, I see this sign, big sign, you couldn't miss it. It reads, Uman loves Trump. <laughs> Still don't know how it's connected to my relationship, but I'm hoping to figure that out. Uh, you know, people ask me, you know, was Uman a life-changing experience? Absolutely. It took about four years off of mine. <laughs>